Last episode, we looked at the biggest bots around. This week, we're looking at the smallest in the basics on Minicons. Minicons are small transformers about the same size as humans, who often form partnerships with full-size transformers. Introduced in 2002's Transformers Armada, Minicons were the central feature around which the series was built, but they weren't wholly without precedent in Transformers history. Right from the beginning of the franchise back in 1984, the concept of small Transformers partnered with larger ones existed in the form of Soundwave and his cassettes, and other characters defined by their small stature would appear in later years like the Target Masters, and perhaps most famously the Micro Masters, Transformers' answer to Micro Machines. Two things distinguished Minicons from these earlier concepts. They were marketed as a unique faction, separate from the Autobots and Decepticons, with their own insignia, and they possessed a special ability. They could combine with larger Transformers via a process known as power linking, increasing the larger bot's power and granting them new abilities. For this reason, both the Autobots and Decepticons sought to catch them all, just as kids were urged to acquire the highly collectible little robots to power up their action figures. See, every Minicon in the toy line had a circular port that allowed them to attach to special pegs on the larger figures that unlocked hidden weapons, lights and sounds, and other play features. Every figure in the Armada line came with its own Minicon partner, and additional Minicons were sold in teams of three, which had unique play features of their own, like the ability to combine into weapons for the larger figures to wield. In the Armada cartoon, the Minicons were created by the all-powerful monster planet Unicron, who intended for the Autobots and Decepticons to fight over their power, allowing him to grow stronger by absorbing all the violence and hatred of their conflict. In an unexpected turn of events, however, three human children who had been sent back in time from the future made contact with the Minicons, leading them to slowly develop independent thoughts and free will. After a few years of war, the now sentient Minicons rebelled, and with the Autobots' help, fled Cybertron in a starship, entering hibernation in stasis panels. Their ship crash landed on Earth, and the panels were scattered all over the planet. Millions of years later, when those same human children found the crashed ship, a signal was automatically sent to Cybertron that alerted the Transformers to the Minicon's location, and they came to Earth to renew their war over the little robots. Minicons were programmed to be servile. They would bond to whatever Transformer freed them from their stasis panel, and were compelled to follow their commands, Autobot or Decepticon. They couldn't speak, communicating only through R2-D2-style beeps and whistles. Uh, translation please? But some human beings could telepathically understand them, thanks to the role humans had played in their development. In addition to providing a simple power boost for their partners, the Minicons were capable of evolving other machines they powerlinked with, upgrading and reconfiguring them, which in the case of Transformers meant reformatting parts of their bodies to become new weapons. As the series progressed, with their human friend's help, the Minicons were able to overcome their programming, unlock the full extent of their Unicronian powers, and aid the Transformers in defeating their evil creator. The cartoon offered just one take on the Minicons' story. Dreamwave Productions' Transformers Armada comic book featured another very different one. Here, Minicons were native Cybertronians unconnected to Unicron, and their ability to power link was the work of the Decepticons, who captured them and experimented on them to turn them into power sources. The story of their flight from Cybertron and their crash and subsequent reawakening on Earth was much the same as in the cartoon, but the comics Minicons were much more independent characters. They were fully capable of speech, they weren't stored in stasis panels, and they had their own personalities, whether they were unwilling slaves of the Decepticons, reluctant allies of the Autobots, or dangerous free agents with their own agendas. When Armada came to a close, Minicons ceased to be the centre of attention, but new Minicon toys continued to be produced for the two sequel toy lines that followed, Transformers Energon and Transformers Cybertron, which together with Armada comprised the Unicron Trilogy. They maintained a presence in the comics and cartoons. The Energon comic implied some of their number had evolved into new Transformers called Omnicons, while the Cybertron cartoon featured Minicons from the colony world of Gigantion. 
and ancillary Cybertron media revealed that by the time of that series, many of the small robots had retired to independent colonies on Cybertron's moons. But their success was not to be confined to the Unicron trilogy. It wasn't long after Cybertron ended before new Minicons started appearing in other toy lines and continuities, from Generation 1 to the live-action movie universe and beyond. With each new universe the Minicons appeared in, they were reimagined to some degree. Stories from the Transformers Collectors Club set in the world of Generation 1 depicted them as creations of the ancient last Autobot, while Japanese media reinterpreted them as just being a kind of micromaster in some stories, or a kind of target master in others. IDW Publishing's comic books incorporated them into their stories by making Minicons nothing more than a nickname that Transformers used to refer to a different race of alien robots named the Stentarians. This ongoing reinvention of what it meant to be a Minicon saw the non-verbal approach of the Armada cartoon largely abandoned in preference of letting Minicons speak normally, and the power-enhancing abilities seen in Armada weren't always part of these new stories. Coupled with the way the concept was sometimes conflated with older ideas from Transformers history, being a Minicon gradually came to mean nothing more than just being a small Transformer. Special powers were no longer a requisite. This even led several characters of small stature from Transformers history to be retroactively referred to as Minicons, like the live-action movie's Frenzy, or to be reimagined as Minicons in new continuities, as was the case with Soundwave's cassettes in the Aligned continuity. The Aligned continuity in particular was able to incorporate Minicons into its world from the very beginning, and it shaped how the concept has come to be treated today. Comparable to Dreamwave's comic book take, Minicons are now treated as regular Cybertronians, just another of the numerous natural subspecies of Transformers that exist, natives of Cybertron's moons who are distinguished from regular Transformers by being small. Their origins lie with Micronus Prime, one of the original 13 Primes from Cybertronian prehistory and the first Minicon from whom all modern Minicons are descended. It's been said that Minicons live to serve, and they've been known to work public sector jobs that allow them to fulfil that desire, like infrastructure and law enforcement. Some also choose to serve individuals directly by entering into partnerships with them. Borrowing a term that Hasbro had already been using to refer to Soundwave's cassettes for a while, the aligned continuity dubbed Minicons who form these partnerships Deployers, so named because they attach to their larger partner's body and deploy from them into action. It was the 2015 Robots in Disguise series that brought Minicons back to the spotlight in a way that hadn't been seen since the Armada days. It featured three varieties of Deployer Minicon, Autobot Buzzsaws, Decepticon Torpedoes, and unaligned, spherical, non-verbal Minicons called Cyclones. Their toys were designed with simple one-step transformations and were sold both individually and in packs with their partners, who were equipped with built-in launchers that could deploy them, and as the range grew they became a prominent element of the cartoon's second season. Deployers didn't possess any power-enhancing abilities like their Armada predecessors, but other groups featured in the series did. The Weaponizers, who turned into weapons that could boost the power or control the mind of whoever held them and the Activators, who, like the Armada cartoon Minicons, could evolve new abilities in the Transformers they were combined with, unlocking new transformations when their toys were connected. Like the Minicons of Dreamwave's Armada comic, these special powers were the product of Decepticon genetic experimentation. One other unnatural kind of Minicon exists in the Aligned continuity. Featured in the Japanese version of Transformers Prime, the ARMS Minicons were created when exposure to Energon brought the Transformers weapons to life. These figures came as model kits with the larger Prime toys, and could combine with one another into new weapons in many different ways. Lastly, IDW Publishing's comics would later incorporate the aligned origin for Minicons into their stories, revealing that genuine Cybertronian Minicons did exist in addition to the Stentarians. They hailed from a colony established on another planet by Micronus Prime, but unfortunately it was wiped out by the anti-robotic aliens the Black Block Consortia, and the only known survivor, Nickel, joined the Decepticons in pursuit of revenge. 
Of all the new ideas the Unicron trilogy brought to the world of the Transformers, there's no question that the little Minicons were the biggest. Like the bots themselves, the idea has proven endlessly adaptable, power linking onto Transformers history and constantly evolving in new directions. And those are the basics on Minicons. Share some of your favourites in the comments below, and remember to click that bell while you're down there so you can be notified when future episodes are released. Also, sponsored episodes will be back in a month or two, so click over to Patreon and get your suggestions in now.